Hi everyone. In today's video, I will firstly explain the look ahead and the pass track function available in the Active System. And then I will take you into the Active System and show you what these functions look like and how you can select or deselect uh, these features which are available in the Agdis. So for those of you who don't know what the Agdis look ahead features is, the Agdis look ahead function is used to change the charts and scale, review the navigational chart and review the navigational situation ahead and around the ship. For route monitoring, the selected route and own ship's position should appear whenever the display covers that area. It should be possible to display a sea area that does not have the ship on the display. Example for look ahead, route planning, while route monitoring. If this is done on the display used for route monitoring, the automatic route monitoring functions, example for updating ship's position and providing alarms and indications, should be continuous. It should be possible to return to the route monitoring display covering own ship's position immediately by a single operator action. Electronic charts, particularly the vector charts, offer a range of alarms and indicators for route monitoring. They serve to bring the situation to the attention of the watch officer so he or she can interfere as required. For this, the relevant alarms are defined in the IMO performance standards. For instance, if the ship can be used, the system can be used to determine if any danger lies ahead of the ship's current position. A warning indicator is activated if the powerful anti-grounding function registers the danger of standing or a too close approach to an object ahead of the ship. In today's video, I will also show you how these alarms and warning signals look like and how you can find out the information that they relay. The monitoring zone moves with the ship and raises an alarm when any electronic navigation chart object which is determined by the system to be dangerous appears within it. In particular, the Agdis will raise an alarm or a warning indication if the ship is to cross a safety contour, cross the boundary of a prohibited area or of an area for which special conditions exist or pass too closely to a buoy, beacon, recon, or any other similar aids to navigation within a time limit preset by the watch officer. In my other videos, I have shown you how to set the anti-grounding vector as well as the width, which is up to you as the user and the conditions in which your ship is uh, transiting in that you can set the settings accordingly. The safety zone of the anti-grounding tool may, for example, have the shape of a circular sector, the dimensions of which are determined by the ship's speed and by the preset safety values. Its color is normally for bright orange. Different manufacturers use different procedures and names for the same thing. So some exit systems, it may be called a look ahead feature and in other exit systems, it may be called a watchdog function. Because the ship sails in congested waters, the active search sector is intentionally rather narrow to avoid unwanted alarms. Example, the buoy abeam will not activate the look ahead alarm. This is achieved by appropriate alarm parameter limits, for example, look ahead distance or lateral tolerances, etc., which have been set by the watch officer during route planning or later. So now I will go into the Agdis system and show you how the look ahead feature looks like, how the anti-grounding tool is used to uh, be set in a way that will warn you for any dangers to navigation. I will also show you what the pass track feature looks like, how you can select or deselect and I will also show you the warnings and alarm signals that light up during the ship's passage when you are using the active system and how you can go about finding the alarms and warning signals and what action you should be ideally taking when you see it.
All right, remember that the electronic charge system may operate in true motion mode such that the own ship will move across the chart display. So you as the officer on watch will have the option to choose this mode and will probably offset the own ship from the center of the display in order to achieve the maximum benefit from the look ahead function. I'll show you how it all looks like. As your own ship will approach the edge of the screen, as just like in radars and ARPAs, it will reset to the opposite side of the screen. So one of the disadvantages of raster charts is that as the own ship approaches the edge of the chart itself, the chart border displays or other dis, dis, chart border will be displayed. It may be that the system does not automatically load the next chart or transfer the own ship to the next chart and you as the officer on watch will have to do this yourself or risk finding that your own ship is on a blank screen. So let's get into the Agdis system now and see whatever we have been talking about for the last five minutes. So guys here you can see how in the Agdis system the anti-grounding tool is set up together with the look ahead function. So you can see outside the bridge windows as well you have the look ahead function available that you can see what you are supposed or expecting. You can also use the ARPA or your radar screens as I am showing you right now to see what is coming ahead. But Agdis also has this feature which is very helpful and you can see how the yellow lines they signify the anti-grounding tool and I have set up the anti-grounding tool in such a way that it gives me an early warning. I can zoom out and see the pass track. You can see how the pass track looks like. So the curved lines, the black line, the curved lines, you can see how the pass track looks like of the ship. You can also deselect it later on but you can see how I am using the look ahead function now to look ahead and see what uh, dangers to navigation or how safe is my ship to navigate in this area. So you can see here I can see my ship as well as the chart on which I am supposed to be traversing in. So I am zooming out and I can use the look ahead function to see what is ahead and uh, what should I be expecting. So if I go to uh, charts and I go to themes you will see that I can also use the one click standard feature to get rid of a lot of the clutter if I don't need it especially if I am at open sea and I don't need uh, many of these features I may use one click standard button which clears up the clutter and leaves me with only the essential navigational features. However I can click on the ones that I really am interested in during a voyage and then choose to keep that on the chart. I can of course also use the option of having the paper chart symbols or the simplified symbols that is up to me as the user what I want to keep and what I am comfortable with you can switch from one to the other and you can see the difference. Uh, I will also discuss this in a separate video where I will go into it in detail. But I can also deselect the pass track feature if I want and if I don't need that pass track feature. So you can see that if I go into the accuracy I can use the depth feature. Then if I go to non chart you can see here how I can deselect the pass track feature. So if I don't need the pass track I don't want to see the pass track it's you know creating a clutter I will use it to declutter. Now I will show you the warnings and alarms we were talking about. So here you can see the warnings and alarms are lighting up. If you click on the alarms you can see all the alarms and the reason for the alarms are showing up. So local reposition input failure in case your you know there is some kind of position input is not coming in. You can also click the warning alarms which are coming in yellow. So here the warning is about the no official data available and here we cannot use the navigation chart or electronic chart we must use the paper chart. So your alarms are coming in red color and your warning lights are showing up in yellow color uh, depending on the uh, extent of emergency that they are signifying. So you can click on the official the warning symbols as well and get the details of that. You can see the click you can I'm clicking on the button and then I can go into the details and the details are also coming on the side of the chart. I can click on each detail review it and see whether if it is really affecting me in some way or the not. So here you can see there is a local AIS input failure so on and so forth. So this is how we address the alarms and warnings during a passage as well.